Bible tells us Proverbs 24 and in verse 3 another critical point in the subject of wisdom Proverbs 24 and in verse 3 through wisdom is an house builded and by understanding it is established now this is not talking of the physical structure this is talking about the structure of the home so every home that is solid is built by wisdom proverbs 3 16 rushing very quickly to ensure that we go through this proverbs 3 16 now that we have seen how important wisdom is, what are the associates of wisdom? Let length of days is in our right hand. Proverbs 3 here is talking about wisdom. So when it uses pronouns here, it's talking about wisdom. Go back there. Length of days is in our right hand. And in our left hand, riches and honor. So, in the right hand, you see that wisdom preserves because length of days is in the right hand. But on the left, you see that there are riches and honor. So if you are looking for a combination of long life and wealth, what you are looking for is wisdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you can find one thing that gives you all things, no wonder it says wisdom is the principal thing. It is the principal thing. Don't look for the vice principal. Wisdom is the principal thing. You, wisdom arrives on our right hand is long life, length of days. On our left hand, riches and honor. What you get is wisdom. What you didn't bargain for was long life and prosperity. Wisdom carries both. This is the importance of wisdom. Proverbs 14 and in verse 24. Proverbs 14 and in verse 24. The crown of the wise is their riches. But the foolishness of fools is their folly. The crown of the wise is their riches. This scripture is saying that one principal proof that you have encountered wisdom is riches. Are you getting it or I'm the one saying it? The crown of the wise is their riches. The scripture is saying it is impossible to truly encounter this type of wisdom. And it doesn't deliver value that lifts men out of poverty. The crown of the wise is their riches. The wise will just know how to take what they have to get what they need. The wise will just know how to take nothing and make something out of it. The wise will just know how to take the little that they have and multiply it. You remember that parable Jesus gave concerning the talent. We call it the parable of the talent. He gave one to one, gave five or so, and then he gave ten, right? Now, I can't remember what he gave the other one, but I know he gave one, he gave ten. Was it two? Sorry? Okay. Praise God. Now I can't quite remember now. But what happened? The ones he gave the other ones said, when he came back, they met him and said, what you gave us, we traded with it. We did business with it. And now, look at what it has become. He looked at them. What happened? What did the master say? He was happy with them. The other one said, and I want you to take note. I know that you are an austere man. You are looking to reap where you didn't sow. Do you think I'm stupid? 
what you gave me, normally I would have wasted it. But I kept it. Take <laughs> what you gave me. Now listen, people of God. The one he gave one who came back and said, take what you gave me, did not lose the principle. Comparing with the prodigal son, the prodigal son lost the principle. He lost everything he was given. This one did not lose what he was given. The prodigal son wasted what he was given in riotous living. This one is sin. Was after time. He brought back what he was given the way it was given. It, it, it means that an inability to multiply what is given is still not acceptable. That you lose what was given makes you prodigal. That you are unable to increase what was given makes you unacceptable. The desire of God is that anything that touches your hand gets better. As you step from this service today with this fresh understanding, that will be your portion. Hey. 